If you have a fully software brick switch, or a console with a damaged NAND chip without having the original NAND backup that came from the console, you can try reviving it by following the video guide. It is an update to a video that I posted some time ago. Let's get started. You need a minimum of 32GB microSD card with an XFAT file system to follow this guide. Please use the Windows built-in disk formatter to turn your microSD card as XFAT. And please use the Unbrick Pack version 3 to follow this guide. If you see a blue screen, a purple screen, or a blank or black screen while trying to boot into the original firmware, you can try fixing those issues by following this guide. Remember, only do this guide if you don't have the original NAND backup. If you have a broken NAND backup or an old one, that counts as a NAND backup. And if you think you didn't flash other console NAND or didn't mess with the NAND by screwing up everything, do not do this guide. So basically, you can do this guide if you lost everything, like your NAND chip is damaged and you don't have the original data to restore into it. For this video, we will fully use the donor NAND and its prod info. Why? Because when we generate the prod info from scratch, the console cannot read any game card, which is miserable. You can find the link to the donor NAND in the description below. And for this video, you need to download the Unbrick Pack version 3. See the link in the description. And finally, you need to download the latest version of .NET Desktop Runtime, either the 64-bit or the 32-bit version. First, let's install the .NET Core. Double-click the installer and follow the on-screen instruction. If you already have the .NET Core, you can skip this step. Open the Unbrick Pack version 3 and get into the two consoles SD card folder. Extract all the content to your SD card and replace everything if prompted. Now go back and get into the PC Apps folder. Extract both folders to the desktop. Now open the donor on an archive. Open the switch folder inside the SD card and extract the donor prodinfo.binary file into this folder. Insert the micro SD card into the console. If your switch is version 1 and unpatched, use any payload injector like the Tegra CMGUI or any dongle and select the SX Loader payload. For chip switch, just turn on the console. And in the end, all switch models will boot to Hecate. You can skip this date and time settings by pressing done or you can set it up. It's up to you. Now press Tools. Select Backup EMMC. Select EMMC Boot 0 and Boot 1. This process will dump the Boot 0 and Boot 1 which are not needed. But the most important thing is we need Hecate to generate the exact backup and restore folder inside the SD card. Now press close. The following step is not needed, but I suggest you do it before completely rebuilding and replacing the NAND. Press EMMC raw GPP. And wait a while until it is finished dumping the console's NAND. Now press close. And press close again. Press the home button. Press console info. Then choose Hardware and Fuses. On this screen, you need to check its SKU. There are currently 4 switch models in the wild. Unpatch Arista, Patch Arista, Regular Mariko, and Light Mariko. This is an example of Unpatch Arista. The SKU name is Icosa Arista. And you can see the green text that says, this unit is exploitable to the RCM bug. And this is an example of a patch Arista. The SKU name is still Icosa Arista, but you see the orange text that says, this unit is patched to the RCM bug. This is what you see when you have a regular Mariko. The SKU name is Iowa Mariko. And if you have the light version, it says Hope Mariko. This video will show you how to unbreak the unpatched Arista, but the guide works for all models. Now press close. Select payloads. Select lockpick RCM. 
On this screen, select Dump from Sysnet. If you see this error notifications, don't worry. The new lockpick RCM is capable of dumping the console keys even though the boot zero is damaged. Press any button to get back to the main menu. Then choose Payload. Select Prodinfo Gen.bm. Select Build Prodinfo file from Donor. Then press any button to continue. Now we have all the data to get from the broken console. Select Power Off. And remove the micro SD card from the console. Open the donor on an archive. Then open the NX NAN Manager folder. Extract or copy the donor prod keys and the donor RONAN into the NX NAN Manager folder. Now get into the switch folder inside the micro SD card. Rename the generated prodinfo from donor.win to prodinfo.dec. Press yes on the pop-up window. Now select the prodinfo.dc and the prod.keys, then drag or copy it to the NX10 Manager folder. Make sure you have the donor prod.keys, donor bin, prodinfo.dc, and the prod.keys inside the NX10 Manager folder. If one or several items are missing, you cannot continue with this guide. Now double click the extract batch file. It will take some time to finish extracting the donor NAND components, so please be very patient. Next, double-click the encrypt batch file. And the last one, double-click the flash batch file. Press the Y button on every prompted question. Now we will check if the rebuilt NAND is done correctly. Open the NX NAND Manager 64. Click Options, then select Configure Key Set. Select Import Keys from File. Then select the Prod.Keys file, which is a set of keys we got from the console. And save it. Click File, Open File, and select the Donor or NAND.bin. You should be able to see the device ID and the firmware version. If you cannot see this information, then you didn't build the NAND correctly. Now click More Info. You should see zeros on the console serial number. When you see a typical serial number, then you didn't build the NAND correctly. When everything is okay, you may close the NX NAND Manager. Now we have to download the firmware file. I suggest downloading the latest firmware as possible. As in this guide, I will use firmware 13.0.0. Now open the eMMC HackGen folder. Double-click the firmware archive and extract all its content to the FW folder inside the eMMC HackGen folder. Now run the eMMC HackGen GUI. Select your console type. You should have known it earlier. In my case, I chose Unpatch Arista and I will disable the Auto RCM feature because I don't need it. Now select the console prod keys. Click Browse and get into the Switch folder inside the console's SD card, and select the prod.keys file. For the firmware folder, select the FW folder inside the eMMC HackGen folder. And the last one is to select the main eMMC HackGen executable file. And then press Go and it will generate the NAND components. If nothing happens, you may haven't installed the .NET Core 3.1, or you haven't put the firmware files inside the FW folder. You may now close the GUI, and you can see the generated folder inside the eMMC HackGen folder. Now open the newly generated NAND components folder inside the eMMC HackGen folder. Then open the scripts folder inside the console's SD card. Drag or copy the system folder and the boot.dis file from the newly generated folder into the scripts folder.
Now open the backup folder inside the microSD card. Enter the alphanumeric folder and enter the restore folder. Get into the NX9 manager folder. Copy the altered and process donorrowdent.bit into the restore folder. Then rename the donorrowdent.bit to rowdent.bit. Insert the microSD card into the console. If you are using the Tegra RCM GUI on an unpatched console, inject the SX Loader payload. And if you are using a dongle, use the same payload, the SX Loader payload. If your console is patched and using a mod chip, turn it on, and it will load into Hecate at first boot. On Hecate, select Tools. Then select Restore eMMC. Select Restore eMMC Raw GPP. And after some time, it will finish restoring the NAND. Press close. Press close again. Then press home. Select payloads. Select Tegra Explorer. Select browse SD. Get into the scripts folder. Select the system restore version 3 script. Then select launch script. Select restore both. And press the power button to begin restoring the NAND partitions. And it will take some time to finish. Press any key to go back. Select folder back. And choose Exit Explorer. Now select the system wipe script. Select wipe sysmmc. On this screen, press the power button to proceed. And after you see this screen, press any button to go back. Now choose browse emmc. Get into the system partition. Then enter the save folder. You will see three files inside this folder. Now you need to delete the file that ends with D1 and 47. So go ahead and delete those files. In the end, you will only have one file that ends with 120. If you accidentally deleted this file, you need to copy it again from the system folder inside the scripts folder. Now select folder back. Select exit explorer. Select back. On this screen, select reboot normally. And if everything is fine, you will get into the console setup screen. And when you get into the system settings, you will see the latest firmware version, which is 13.0.0 .0 when I made this video. And don't be surprised if the serial number is blank. It is intended to be like that. You can never have the original console serial number unless you have the original Pro info from the console. So I think that is a way to revive or resurrect any Switch models from the dead. If you didn't get a good result, there might be problems on the hardware side. Anyway, thanks for watching this video.